Well, trying to make the connection between the needs of industry and the interests of a young student may be the $64,000 question when it comes to STEM education, and it may all come down to something as simple as how we teach. Joining me now is our Courtney May. Well, Rob, earlier in the show we met SDAC consultant Ginger Lumen, and this summer we had the opportunity to see Ginger's ideas come to life at a camp for teachers. When pigs fly, and cat's ears wave, learning is taking place. And traditional book learning, it's not. But a hands-on approach that grabs students' attention. Ginger Lumen is an education consultant with SDAC and the creator of a camp called Steammaker. Steammaker Camp has actually been uh, a brainchild of mine for the past couple of years. I've been uh, lucky, fortunate to be able to, to, to grow this sort of environment. It, it stems out of the background of STEM. And instead of it being the traditional science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, which is great, it's actually science tinkering engineering, aesthetics, and mathematics. Camilla Shaw says she would be excited to come to school. I love hands-on activities. I can't stand sitting down and just sit in it. I gotta do something. And while the kids are having fun, Ginger right. says it's the teachers she hopes to help. It's really a camp for teachers, and the kids are here to help the teachers see how it might work with their kids in their own environment. What the teachers are learning is they're learning how to support while letting go. I'm not the sage on the stage. I don't really want to be the guide on the side either. I want to be the meddler in the middle. I want to be the one who sees where they're at and pushes them farther. I don't care if they come to me, a genius in the classroom already knowing things. Great, there's more to learn. And I don't care if they come to me really far behind. I'm going to start where they are and push them and that everybody gets to learn something new every day. So the teachers are learning how to help kids get through struggles without yelling and saying, get to work. Man, no, no quicker way to kill energy than yelling at a kid. And teachers like Jean Hart what do you want to do to the head? are happy with what they're seeing. I have watched my kids really blossom. And it's so exciting because even the quiet ones, they, even though if they don't say much, they're doing. My quietest one is jumping in and doing things. When we go, who wants to do this? He just gets on it and does it. And it, it's amazing to watch. Just ask Sam. Sam Robson is Hart's student and says it's exciting to learn. It's just like the hands-on aspect of everything we did allows us to learn so much more than just a lecturer at the front of the room and us taking notes or something. You know, whenever we're there, whenever we're teaching each other and learning together, I think it's just so much more powerful. Elementary school teacher Mary Eden says this type of instruction does away with some traditional stereotypes. Growing up, I've kind of seen, you know, like jobs for women, jobs for men, like not that mixture. My girls, when they were in deconstruction, they took apart a DVD player, put it back together, and it was just so great just to kind of get those stereotypes erased for the three days. Whenever you're working as a team, everybody feels equal and like they should play a part, and I think it, it really helps you to learn as yourself. Kids are so much more passionate and they want to do it. They, they asked me, they said, can we learn this way all the time? Making a difference in how a child learns, one teacher at a time. Now Ginger says the purpose of Steam Maker Camp is to show teachers and students there are multiple ways to learn and be engaged. Yet this hands-on approach in her eyes is extremely effective. Now most of the students in your story look to be what, junior high maybe or, or early high school. Is it aimed at other children as well? Yeah, they start as early as pre-K and even to second grade, and that's because Ginger says that students start learning at a young age by exploring and tinkering, and this is how they're able to learn before they even 
read or write. And once they go to school, she says a lot of this creativity is lost because they're taught to color inside the lines and that there's a right way and only one right way. But she says this isn't the way of the world. And if we want our students to be prepared for the world, we have to start teaching them at a young age. All right. Thanks so much, Courtney. You're welcome, Rob.